Hello guys, today we have Paul from Chatham and he has a story to tell. So let's welcome Paul on Zoom and talk to him today. Hi everyone, my name is Paul Ward. Uh, I grew up in, uh, in Oil Springs, Ontario. Uh, it's the first place where oil was discovered in North America. If that interests you at all, we have a museum there. Um, but I had two parents um, who both were Christians, um, which means they both had a, a moment in their life where they trusted uh, the Lord Jesus Christ uh, to forgive their sins through his work at the cross and dying for their sins. Um, so I was very blessed to have them as my parents, and I still love them today. They're great. And I also had a sister uh, who's older than me, so I was the youngest in my family. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the backstory of me. Uh, now, do you remember anything specific about growing up in a Christian family? We were always seemed like we were always at meetings when I was a kid, um, which I didn't really appreciate um, because it usually be at least an hour of sitting, and most kids don't like sitting for more than 10 minutes. So, um, But it seemed like we were always at meeting. We would have a meeting on Sunday in the morning. We'd have a meeting on Sunday night, uh, the gospel meeting. We have a meeting on Thursday night, and then oftentimes there'd be special series uh, of meetings either in Oil Springs or in Sarnia or in Chatham or some of the neighboring cities. And uh, my parents pretty much always made it to those ones too. And then we'd always have times uh, during the day when we'd sit down as a family and read our Bible. And uh, my dad would pray, and he'd go through all the people in his life and pray for each and every one of them. And it always seemed like a really long list. And I'm really thankful for that today. But at the time, I wasn't very thankful for it. Um, it was more of a, a chore, and it, and it wasn't something that I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. But uh, that, was, that was how I grew up. Thank you, Paul. When was the time that in your life that you understood that you need forgiveness from God, and only he can save you? Or when was the time when, when you found yourself in a situation seeking for God's forgiveness? Always kind of grew up understanding the Bible verses that say that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Um, that humanity as a whole is sin. There's no one perfect among us. Not one of us has ever um, maintained a perfect record of not sinning. I can look back to many times where uh, I would recognize that, yeah, that what I did was wrong and, and that's not the right thing to do. Um, but probably the time when it most became clear was when I got saved because that was kind of a, a sticking point for me was um, understanding that truly that I am a sinner and I have done wrong. But I would pray and I would feel a little bit better and uh, eventually kind of passed through that phase and, and I was able just to kind of go back to, to relaxing and, and I didn't really think much about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't really thinking much about God. I was just continuing on with my life, um, but I still wasn't saved and I wasn't really searching to be saved, but I knew I wasn't saved. Um, and it wasn't until uh, May 1st of 2009, mm -hmm. I believe I was 15 years old, um, and we were in a, another series of gospel meetings and this time it was two preachers, Terry Topley and Jim Frazier. And they were speaking every night. Um, and we'd go to meetings every night. And it was a Friday night. I remember uh, I was in Sarnia. We'd played rugby that day. And we went to the mall afterwards. I remember thinking just kind of subconsciously, there was a song playing over the mall radio. And it was a country song. And it's, uh, if you're going through hell, and the words of the, of the song kind of go, if you're going through hell, keep on going you might get out before the devil even knows you're there. And just to myself, I thought, like, what a stupid song. Yeah. Everyone knows once you're in hell, you're there for good. You, there's no escaping. Like, hell is forever. And I didn't really think much of it until later on that night, we came to gospel meeting. And it was the last night of the series, and both men preached very faithfully. I can't remember what they said, but I remember they preached with a lot of passion. There were tears in their eyes. Um, I think they knew I wasn't saved. And while I was listening, I felt really bad for them. I thought, you know, they've came so far. They've preached so, so faithfully. Uh, someone should get saved for them. Maybe I'll get saved for them, you know, and make it worth their while for coming here. Yeah. So it was a very solemn meeting, and uh, we all kind of filed out afterwards. No one really talked to each other. We all just got in the car and started driving home. And uh, as we were driving home, there's a stretch of road uh, between the gospel hall where we were and our house and there's a curve on it kind of sharp cur curves sharply and uh have seen quite a few accidents over the years at that curve and uh, I, I began to think about the fact that you know if dad loses control of this car on this curve and we crash and i die i'll be in hell and hell's forever i'm never getting out of there and i started thinking about that more and more and i started realizing the fact that i'm not saved my sin uh, is taking me to hell if, if I die. 
then it's over. I'm, I'm going to be in hell. And so I, I realized at that point, like when I get home, I need to get saved, not for the preachers. I need to get saved for me. This is something that it, it's not for anyone else. This is between me and God and I need to get my sin taken care of. And so I decided I'm, when I get home, uh, we safely made it past the curve. And uh, I decided I'm going to figure this out tonight. And so we got home safely. And uh, I knew a lot of the verses that people refer to in the gospel about how to be saved. And none of them really made sense to me. I was just reading them and it's just like, okay, that, I, I guess, yeah, that makes sense. But it doesn't make sense to me. It's not changing anything for me. I don't feel any different. Um, and so I was getting frustrated at this point and I read more verses and I prayed more and eventually I started crying and getting emotional and I, I can't figure this thing out. Um, the only thing I could think of was a verse, um, a very simple verse in the Bible. It's in Acts 16 and 31. It says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And I thought, well, what do I believe? I mean, I, be I already believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that he came to earth. I believe that he died. I believe that he rose again, went back to heaven. I believe that he can save a sinner. Um, what am I missing? I don't feel any different. I'm not saved as far as I know, like what's going on. And so um, that verse just kept going through my mind and my mind. I was getting so frustrated because I couldn't figure out how to believe when I thought I already did believe. And so uh, I remember going to my room and thinking to myself, I just remember looking at the floor and thinking like, I can't figure this out. There's nothing I can do here. I'm, I'm just going to have to go to hell. Like I'm a sinner and I'm not smart enough. I'm not able to figure this out and my sin's going to have to take me to hell. And uh, I mean, I could think of a whole bunch of sins that I committed, um, but it was more just the fact that all my sins, I was totally powerless to take them away. I was totally powerless to figure the salvation thing out. Only uh, salvation could take my sins away and make me right with God. And I couldn't figure it out. And so it was at the moment when I finally gave up me trying to do something, trying to believe hard enough. And I looked up on the wall of my room and I, I noticed a tract, which is just a plaque with a verse on it uh, that my mom must have put there a long time ago. I never really noticed it before this point, but it was Isaiah 53 and verse 5, which is in the Bible. And it says, uh, for he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we were healed. And that's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's talking about him taking the punishment for our sins. And in my mind, I just kind of put those two verses together. The one that had been running through my mind, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, and the one on the wall, that he was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for my, my iniquities. The chastisement or the punishment for my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, you're healed and you'll be saved. I just put them together like that. And it just made sense in my mind that, you know, it's not something I can do. It's not about me believing. It's not about me doing anything. The work's already been done by the Lord Jesus Christ at the cross. I simply need to accept it. That it wasn't just that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he existed or that he lived or that he died. Mm -hmm. Believe that he has paid for your sins at the cross. And if you accept it, then you can be saved and you can have your sins forgiven and be right with God. And that moment I was saved. Thank you, uh, Paul, for sharing your testimony. Anything you want to share? about your relationship with God over the years that you have experienced and enjoyed? Just God is so big, so powerful. We can't fit him into our minds. We can't fit him into a box. And when you look at the Bible and how he, he acts and he responds and he speaks and he creates and, and how he works, it's, it's just amazing. Um, and you can see it in so many spheres because um, right now I've just been enjoying creation and how God speaks through creation. Mm -hmm. um, it says that uh, when I look at the stars and, and the moon uh, and how they're the handiwork of your fingers, it says in, in the Bible, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him. And so it's amazing when you think that the God who created this whole world um, and the complexity of it, the size of it, the just amazingness of this whole world and his creation, that he would take an interest in me, um, the whole me here in Chatham. Uh, <laughs> and... and anyone it, it's amazing that he would take an interest in us and would desire a relationship with each and every one of us thank you paul and thank you for watching this video if you like this video you can use the like button you can ask us a question if you want to email me my email address is right here on the screen and if you are saved if you know what it means to be a christian if you have trusted in jesus christ as your personal savior and your lord then contact me and we can share your testimony with the world 
with Zoom. Thanks again. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.